This is the second part of my pre-Christian teachings of Yeshua of the New Patreon series, number 37, I call it 37B. It's about reforming the Mass, the Eucharist, to proclaim and celebrate the historical Basar, or Gospel, and teachings of Yeshua. This is part two. I'm going to speak about liturgies of the new humanity that uh, I have developed. In 2010, I wrote a new Mass for my home temple colleagues. I had developed other Masses for the previous 20 years that I was using, but I finally uh, wrote a completely new kind of Mass for my home temple colleagues. I call it the Liturgy of Holy Communion based on the uh, Messianic Seder of Yeshua, as we can best understand it. My goal was to conform the basic Eucharistic framework that had been used since the second century in both Western and Eastern churches to the Basor and teachings of Yeshua and to eliminate all elements of sacrificial atonement, which were never part of the original Toda or any of the teachings of Yeshua. The basic form I used was the pro-anaphora and the anaphora, the before the so-called offerings, and uh, the offerings up of the sacrifice. So we still use that terminology, but the pro anaphora, in my case, would, cons would consist of the Aramaic Lord's Prayer, as I have translated it, as it uh, was probably originally done. I'm not talking about the later Syriac Lord's Prayer that people think is the Aramaic Lord's Prayer, but which was simply translated from the Greek version in the Gospel of Matthew but the actual Aramaic Lord's Prayer that was given by Yeshua. And then we do what I call the purification of the heart. Instead of a confession, it's uh, I purify my heart, the chalice of my heart with the flame of love divine. And then we do what it's called returning blessing. That's what the actual thanksgiving is. Returning blessing to the Father, Mother, Abba, that's the meaning of Eucharist, the original meaning of thanksgiving, is to return to the giver that which has been given. And the way one returns it is by uh, passing it on. Uh, it's uh, the concept of giving thanks to God is not just saying praises to God, but it's sharing and uh, passing forward the blessings that are given to you, to others. The anaphora is going to consist of the sursum corda, which is we lift up our hearts, we awaken ourselves. The sursum corda is a very esoteric uh, part of the Mass. And when we understand what the uplifting of the heart is, we'll understand a little more about the energies, the internal energies that are used in the uh, liturgies. Then the invocation to the ever-living Lord of life to be present. And then the Sanctus, Kadosh, 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 which just appears originally in Daniel's uh, 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 prophecy. And it's still used, but in English translation, holy, holy, holy. And then the Anamnesis, the remembrance. Uh, of Yeshua. Thou hast brought forth thy beloved son, our master Yeshua, as firstborn of the new humanity, and so on. Then the Epiclesis, where we called down the divine powers upon the bread and the wine, so to speak, to symbolize the body and blood of, the, of ourselves and the new humanity. Wherefore, we call upon the eternal Lord Christ, and Christ acts as our high priest. Not Jesus Christ, but Christ. And then we have a place for intentions and special rites like ordination and healing and so on. Then we have the communion itself. Take, eat. This is my body, which is your body. And the concluding blessing and dismissals. We use the blessing from the more ancient form, most ancient form of the Didache, teaching of the Twelve Apostles, 
O Holy Father and Mother, as the fruits of the field and vine are gathered from afar to be blessed in the sacrament of bread and wine, so let all humanity be brought together, sanctified, and made one with thee in thine eternal rule. So in 2013, I refined it to create a better liturgy, which I now use for formal altar services. This is called now the Liturgy of the New Humanity. It was translated into Spanish and is now used by many of my Spanish-speaking colleagues, called La Liturgia de la Nueva Humanidad. And in 2014, I adapted it to what I what we call a table seder that is celebrated at a gathering over a meal as Yeshua had originally done. Unless a mass is going to include a, um, an ordination or some other important form of uh, apostolic um, ritual, uh, we normally, I normally do this as a table seder, which I will explain to you later. It's basically a gathering over a meal, just as Yeshua had done, and I wanted to preserve that context. Now, the proanaphora, which literally means what takes place before the, the sacrificial offerings, is a traditional first part of the Mass. Traditional elements include uh, uh, what was called the mass of the catechumens. The catechumens were the people who were being instructed before they could be baptized. So they couldn't participate, or they couldn't partake of communion until they had been baptized. And the catechumenate was very complex and long in some places like Alexandria in the second century and third century. Uh, so this was originally the mass of the catechumens before they were dismissed to classes. They would, this first part of the Mass would include gospel readings and teachings and so on. And uh, then these people would be dismissed and they'd go to their catechetical classes. That's now what we do with children in Sunday school. They are allowed to be in here and very often the preacher will give them a, 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 some kind of a little sermon and then send them off to Sunday school. But proanaphora means <clears throat> before the priestly offering up of the sacrificial elements. Now this is how I reformed the traditional elements. I opened with the translation of Yeshua's Aramaic, our Abba, our Father, Mother, God, the true Aramaic uh, Lord's Prayer. And then a confession is derived from the Shema, and the attunement of the heart, and the offertory becomes a return of blessings to God, the original meaning of thanksgiving. So the mass of the catechumens, or the first part, the pronafra, consists of those parts in my reformed version. Prayers are in the traditional mass recited at the foot of the, at the, foot of the altar by the celebrant. Uh, here, however, the authentic Lord's Prayer is recited by all participants, not just the priest. Uh, the confiti or the confession that you are a sinner and you're seated and so on, uh, sin succeedingly in thought, word, and deed, has been changed to what I call a purification of the heart. I purify my heart, the chalice of my heart, with the flame of love divine. Now, here in traditional Mass, we'd have the Kyrie, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Gloria and Excelsis Deo, Dominum Vobiscum, the Lord be with you with thy spirit, all this stuff, followed by the collect for the day. What we do is something a little different. O eternal Master, almighty and ever-living one, loving Father and Mother of all, we return thy divine blessing unto thee, our Master, who art the source and ruler of all being. So there is no... Uh, guilt involved in this concept. We're not uh, confessing our own sins because that is something that we do personally in our own heart, but we don't confess them. We try to change them. <clears throat> 
And then there's an epistle and a gospel and a sermon and the Nicene Creed. We have in our Reformed version no scripture reading, no sermon, no creed. Because discursive talk destroys the mystic element of liturgy. And we're not going to be dismissing anybody after the pro anaphora. So the pro anaphora has to blow into the anaphora and into the, and into the consecration of the elements. And we don't want to interrupt that with a bunch of discursive talk. <clears throat> now, the ancient custom was that the catechumen studying for baptism now exit because the communion is only for those who have been catechized and baptized. And the modern custom, as I said before, <clears throat> is now for children to exit after a children's sermon and go to the classrooms or Sunday school. Uh, what we do is proceed directly to the anaphora with the sursum corda, the mystic uplifting of the heart. We lift up our hearts, we awaken ourselves, we evoke the eternal flame of the Christ within. Now, I want to say something here about the Nicene Creed and the whole business of creeds versus what I would call an affirmation of faith as an alternative to creeds, because creeds are based in a whole lot of uh, <clears throat> uh, very discursive thought and uh, philosophical, theo theological speculation and all other kinds of things. And they're based in what you believe or belief rather than an affirmation of how you act and how you do things in life. So the Nicene Creed begins with, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, blah, 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 goes on and on and on. He's uh, suffered and was buried in the third day. He rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, and will come again with glory to judge the quick and the dead, and so on. <clears throat> that he was conceived by a virgin, all this kind of stuff. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, blah, blah, blah. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. Uh, and that was a, a big issue between many, many different church denominations, whether one's baptism was equal to another one. We acknowledge uh, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This is the Nicene Creed. Uh, the other creeds are similar to the Apostles' Creed and so on. Here's an alternative. We devote ourselves to the way of our Abba, the fountain of all being, whose guidance is ever present for those who seek it. And we pledge ourselves to sincere discipleship with our Master Yeshua, firstborn and head of the new humanity, and to obedience, obedience to the divine spirit of our Abba that guides those who gather in the name of our Master. And we commit ourselves to the way of life that leads to spiritual rebirth, sanctification of ourselves and our world, apprenticeship in the eternal sovereignties, and co-stewardship with our Abba over all that exists. So this is what, if one wants to use an affirmation of faith, uh, this is what I would suggest as an alternative to creeds. We don't <clears throat> normally include this in our liturgies, however. So the first part of the anaphora goes like this. The traditional elements, uh, bread is offered as a sacrificial victim to God. Wine is the blood of Jesus. A, a victim was what the lamb was called. Anything that was slaughtered or sacrificed was called a victim. And, um, and so the bread is now offered as like the, like the Paschal lamb as a sacrificial victim to God. So there's the offering of bread and wine as sacrifices. So he offers the host, holding it on the patent at breast level and praying that although he is unworthy, God may accept this spotless victim for his own innumerable sins, offenses, and, ne and neglects. For all those present and for all faithful Christians, living and dead, that it may avail unto salvation of himself and those mentioned. He then mixes a few drops of water with the wine, which will later become the blood of Jesus, 
and holding the chalice so that the lip of the chalice is about the height of his lips, he offers the chalice of salvation, asking that it may ascend with a sweet fragrance. So here's how I reform these traditional elements. <clears throat> the bread represents our incarnate flesh and all invisible bodies, and wine represents the sacred interior life of our souls. The invocation is given. Ever-living Lord of life, root of all reality, origin of all beings, source of all that manifests, Father, Mother of our souls, we open our eyes to the glory of thy sacred, ever-present and indwelling reality, and we gather in spirit with all thy host of awakened beings, standing in the legacy of the new humanity. We evoke the enlightened presence of all thy great ones who serve thy divine will and way, and who initiate and guide all nature and humanity through thy profound mysteries of interior transformation and spiritual evolution. All the great ones, not just the Christian ones and the Jewish ones are necessary, even the religious ones. We gather with you, faithful and holy ones of all generations and all worlds, to enact and celebrate the eternal mysteries of the new humanity, and to participate in the joyous universal fellowship of all souls, and the light and peace that passeth human understanding and can be known only by the heart. So this is what we do at this point for the offering, and, the, and we do it as an invocation. <clears throat> The second part of the anaphora, the traditional elements. The priest uh, uh, recites the Sursum Corda with various intercessions and the anamnesis. Uh, the preparation for the consecration of the elements. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord, and let's give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just, and so on. So that's done with uh, responsibly with the congregation. <laughs> That's called the uplifting of the heart. The priest makes intercessory prayers. The priest prays that God may graciously accept the offering and, quote, command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. The anamnesis of remembrance is on the night that he was betrayed. Of course, that's not what Paul says on the night that he was arrested. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, Paul did not think that this was a last Passover meal. Uh, he just says on the night that he was betrayed, which would be uh, the night before the Passover, the night when the lambs, the next morning, the lambs would be slaughtered and Yeshua would be crucified. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant or testament in my blood. This ye, do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Well, the remembrance was how people understood uh, this, uh, uh, this Eucharist as a, an agape, a remembrance meal. The agape was performed very often once a year on the, on the time of the death or the birth of someone who was being remembered uh, and it got to be celebrated on the eighth day weekly in uh, uh, early Greek Christianity, Gentile Christianity. But it was understand, understood as a Passover meal. And then the oblation is made. The pure, holy, spotless victim is now offered with a prayer that God may accept the offering and command his holy angel to carry the offering to God's altar on high so that those who receive the body and blood of Christ, quote, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Now, this is how I reform these traditional elements. Uh, the priests and the people today do the sanctus together. The Sanctus, O Lord of life, thou hast anointed us to exercise thy sovereignty, to apprentice thy works, and to attune ourselves to live in accordance with thy good will. That attunement is the Teshuvah. We know ourselves as individual rays from thy one heart, striving to sanctify ourselves in our world 
in thy many names, which are wisdom, compassion, justice, truth, beauty, the name of God or the names of God were the characteristics of God's uh, virtues, and all thy spiritual lights. We see thy radiance joining our hearts with thine and all others in an infinite web work of divine light and spiritual fire that permeates all space with unfolding streams of soul and consciousness, beloved God. And we sing unto thee in the holiness of this blessed vision, Holy, holy, holy art thou, Adonai Sabaoth, Lord of the hosts of all beings and all worlds, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. And then we all do it together. Uh, there's a special way of standing uh, and rocking forward and backwards to stimulate uh, energy up and down the spine that uh, is described to people before we do the ritual. And so we go, Kadosh, 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 Adonai Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Thy splendor is upon all, thy blessing is upon all, and thine abundance is upon all. And that's repeated uh, in the Hebrew, Mi Adir El Hakol, Mi Baruch El Hakol, Mi Gadol El Hakol. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen, amen, amen. The third part of the anaphora, the traditional elements are the doxology, the elevation, the transubstantiation, and the communion. The doxology is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And God is understood as a gender, as a father, as a male. <clears throat> the Lord's Prayer is given with the fraction of the host in the three parts. Uh, that's the traditional English translation, the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. It should be our Abba who art in the heavens, plural. And in this case, the priest drops the smallest part into the chalice while praying that this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of Christ may, quote, be to us who receive it effectual to life everlasting. Then the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, and so on. Then the priest prays for himself that he may be freed <coughs> from all his iniquities and evils, be made to adhere to the commandments of Jesus and never be separated from him. And in the second uh, prayer he asks, Let not the partaking of thy body, O Lord Jesus Christ, turn to my judgment and condemnation, but through thy goodness may it be under me a safeguard it's in prayers for himself. So the priest takes communion first. In our liturgy, the priest takes communion last after all the people. The priest quietly says several prayers <clears throat> before receiving communion. The first is said in a low voice while taking up the large host on the path. We don't use large and small hosts, large hosts for the priests and small hosts for the people. We use the same size, small host for everybody. Uh, the second of them, spoken three times in a slightly audible voice while the priest holds the host in his left hand and strikes his breast with his right, Lord, I am not worthy. And then after having reverently consumed the host, he takes up the chalice while in a low voice reciting a psalm. <coughs> The congregation takes communion last. He holds up a small host and says aloud, Behold the Lamb of God, and three times, Lord, I'm not worthy, and so on. He then gives communion, first making uh, with the host the sign of the cross over each communicant while saying, May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your soul for eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> These are the traditional elements of the third part of the anaphora. How I reformed these elements. The priest and the people together uh, do the anamnesis. O Lord of life, sacred heart of the universe, thou hast brought forth thy beloved son, our master, Yeshua, as firstborn of a new humanity. Raised him up from the dead and sent him before us as an elder brother and master of our souls, that we might follow the example 
of his life and teaching and listen with our hearts to the inner guidance of heaven to follow your way, imitate you, and ripen into divine and perfected beings as spiritually reborn members of a new sovereign and sanctified humanity. We give thee thanks for Mar Yeshua and all the Lord's masters and enlightened ones who have brought us thy divine teaching throughout the ages and especially for the sacred mysteries that we now enact through the high priesthood of the Lord Christ Melchizedek. We elevate the chalice and the priest says, Our Master Yeshua revealed the sacred mystery of the body and blood of the new humanity who has been anointed by the Lord of Spirits to sit at his right hand and who has been preordained to inherit and exercise divine sovereignty. His body is the spiritual bread of the morrow that nourishes us this day and is our foretaste of the great marriage banquet, which is the divine union of spirit and flesh. His blood is the eternal life of the Father and Mother of all. And our Master Yeshua revealed unto us the holy chalice of the heart, which is the temple of Godhead, the reality of our individual being, and the holy flame through which each of us draws all humanity unto the divine unity we share with all beings, great and small, visible and invisible. And our Master Yeshua taught us how to strive with fidelity and perseverance to liberate our hearts from the bondage of the old humanity and make ourselves fit for spiritual rebirth in the new humanity as Christ's in flesh. Now, beloved Father and Mother, we know ourselves as one with thee and with all thy universe. We make holy communion with the spiritual body and blood of the Christ, which is the eternal life of divine love and the image of Godhead incarnate in all humanity that has ever lived or ever will live. <clears throat> We mystically participate in the spiritual banquet that we experience individually in daily communions and attunements of contemplation, prayer practice, and meditation. And now, O Eternal One, we lift up our hearts and contemplate through the single eye of the heart thine indwelling glory incarnate in all that manifests, returning unto our essential divine nature and looking within unto thy subtle worlds on higher realities guided by thine interior light <clears throat> we sanctify the outer world as christ in flesh and we help create and build the new heavens and the new earth for we are all one body and blood in thee now in the traditional elements the priest performs ablutions or cleansing and prayers and the dismissal the ita missa est Ablutions and prayers, the prayers now focus on what has been received, that we may receive with a pure mind, that no stain of sin may remain in me, whom these pure and holy sacraments have refreshed. The communion antiphon is normally a portion of a psalm. The post-communion prayer is akin to the collect and being an appropriate prayer, not directly drawn from scripture. And the ita, the ita misa est is a and blessing uh, end the uh, the anaphora. Go, it is the dismissal. The word mass derives from this phrase. <clears throat> After saying a private prayer for himself, the priest then gives the people his blessing. Now here's how I reform the traditional elements. We're continuing. The priests and the people are now continuing antiphonally in the epiclesis, the consecration of the elements. <clears throat> Wherefore, we call upon the o eternal, o eternal Lord Christ. And then people repeat that. O Master Yeshua, our high priest. And this is in tone. Wherefore, we call upon thee. And people repeat that. Wherefore, we call upon thee. O eternal Lord Christ. And so on. O Master Yeshua, our high priest, O risen ones and masters of all the hosts of heaven. And the priest then fills the chalice. Pour out thy divine spirit upon us. Then he performs the elevation of the chalice. Kindle the pure flame of our hearts within us. He returns the chalice to the altar. And people have repeated everything he sings. And he elevates the patent with the hosts. Raise up the Christ within us. People repeat that. Fill us with thy heavenly feast. Returning the patent to the altar. And bless sanctify 
and consecrate all worlds, the planet, and all humanity with his palms down over the elements and people repeating, mystically united in these holy elements. And then he uses what we call the blessing mudra and celebrate for all souls and people repeat and create a new within all souls and then putting the palms down over the elements the sacred mysteries of thine eternal body and blood amen 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 and the amen the amen is is intoned uh uh, to evoke all the uh, harmonics in the word from the higher to the lower and then back to the higher harmonics each time and that's done <clears throat> with a posture that promotes the movement of this energy down and then back up so then the priest elevates the patent with the hosts and prays heavenward all loving and ever living lord of life we consecrate unto thee in eucharist thee incarnate flesh and all invisible bodies that thou hast given unto each of us he touches his forehead lips and throat we purify and dedicate all thought word and deed unto the liberation and sanctification of all beings in loving service for love's sake only and then he puts out his hand in blessing and we send forth thy holy blessing unto all worlds the planet and all humanity in the name of our own hearts he touches his heart and his forehead then he holds the patent with the left hand and seals the sacrament by inscribing three equal sided crosses over it with the hands uh, and locked in the right four fingers and the monophysite one fingered mudra. And then the priest elevates the chalice and prays heavenward. Beloved Father and Mother of all worlds, we consecrate unto thee in Eucharist the sacred interior life. He makes a cross over his chest that thou hast apportioned individually unto each of us. We kindle the flame of thy divine spirit. His hand goes from his heart out into a blessing mudra. Within our hearts, we build and strengthen our bridge unto thee for eternal guidance, inspiration, and communion with thy higher worlds. Let the chalice of our hearts be filled with thine heavenly nectars, fragrances, and essences. And that at this point, his hand is, is poised over the chalice that our souls may be nurtured with an evolutionary and transforming energies of higher light, love, and wisdom. In the name of our own hearts, he makes a, a, a emotion from the heart to the forehead. And he holds a chalice with the left hand and seals the sacrament by inscribing three equal sided crosses over it as he did over the paten with the hands locked and the right forefinger in the monophysite or one fingered mudra. Amen, and so on. Now the rest of the home temple in Naphora, <coughs> after the epiclesis, and so on, and, the, and we now have essentially consecrated elements, we have special intentions and rites, usually ordinations of priests and consecrations of bishops, that are done in the presence of the consecrated elements before communion. And then the communion proceeds, which we designate as the mystery of the chalice. The priest offers bread in the invocational mudra, and the congregation does not repeat, Take, eat, this is my body, which is your body. Henceforth I shall be known to you in the breaking of this bread. For if you keep my word, I shall dwell in you, and you in me, and we shall become one body and one heart. And he makes an equal-sided cross from the heart. Therefore, and then he extends his right hand in the blessing mudra, do on earth as I have done, that all humanity may remember us and learn of our love from the heart to the forehead. Then he offers the cup in invocational mudra. Drink ye all of this, for this cup renews the eternal covenant of divine love, making an equal sided cross from the heart, and the life that we shall pour out for the liberation of all humanity. Therefore, and then he extends the right hand in the blessing mudra, show forth the love that I have taught you and become a living memory for all humanity of the true life that lies hidden within each soul. And then he ends with the motion from the heart to the forehead and out. 
The elements are offered by intinction. Uh, the, communi the communicants uh, sit, stand, or kneel to receive. The celebrant first holds the consecrated host to his or her heart, closes eyes, and visualizes a golden radiance of blessing enveloping his or her heart and the host. The host is then put into the hands of the communicant who holds it to his or her heart, does the same blessing visualization. He or she then dips it into the chalice shakes it off and consumes it, returning to sit in Eucharistic meditation. The priest or priestess, as we said before, communicates last after everyone has communicated. <clears throat> the priest holds a host to his heart, then hands it to a communicant who holds it also to his heart, then dips it into the sacrament in the chalice and tincture and can, consumes it as we explained. The priest then returns to the altar and communicates last, after which there is a silent meditation and thanksgiving. And then we have a ritual we call the earthing of the sacrament. The celebrant or celebrants process with the chalice and patent to a specified location outside the temple and pour the remaining sacrament onto the earth, saying, we bless the earth and all beings. And the chalice and the cruet are rinsed then in holy water, uh, then continuing the sunwise circumambulation, they return to the altar. This would be considered to be blasphemy in the Catholic Church. And the priest says, we are ever surrounded in love and tender nurture, the encouragement and wise guidance, and there is no darkness within or without that can ever separate us from the love of God. And let us stand for the apostolic blessing. And uh, this, we, here we, we use the blessing that comes from the, uh, that most ancient form of the Didache. O Holy Father and Mother, as the fruits of field and vine are gathered from afar to be blessed in the sacrament of bread and wine. So let all humanity be brought together, sanctified and made one with thee and thine eternal rule. May the blessing of our eternal and loving Father, Mother, God rest upon us and remain with us always. And uh, Reciting the priestly blessing, uh, the priest raises his hands in the Sheen Mudra, which I illustrate here. And may the Eternal One bless us and protect us. May the Eternal One shine the holy light upon us and be gracious unto us. And may the Eternal One look upon us and give us perfect peace. Uh, and that may be recited in Hebrew if the priest uh, uh, prefers. <clears throat> 